Welcome to the 49th season of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra, the first concert of the 49th season here in Salderton, PA, at the Performing Arts Center of the Doc Mennonite Academy. I'm Kyle Smith, and in, on behalf of the staff and the board and all the volunteers of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra, we thank you, and especially uh, from our music director, Alan R. Scott. It's a crazy world and a strange world, isn't it, right now? And we are so trying to work through the idea that we can't have regular concert experiences. So we are bringing this to you on live stream, the SPSO live stream, and what a great experience this is going to be. Not that we're trying to replicate the concert hall experience. In fact, we're trying to reimagine it. We have multiple cameras on stage. You're going to be able to see close-ups of the players as they are playing, close-ups of the conductor, to see the conductor the way the musicians see him, and it will be even better than having a front row seat, having the concert experience from the inside out. Of course, there are a lot of people to thank for putting on something like this. It takes a lot of resources for all our supporters and our partners, including the Harry L. Willett Foundation, the Doc Mennonite Academy, and the Indian Valley Chamber of Commerce. It also includes you. If you're watching us right now, and there are many ways that you can support us, one great way is just to go to spsorchestra.org, and you can support there, or you can drop us a line and send support to SPSO, P.O. Box 694, Lansdale, PA, 19446. And as I said, we have audiences right around here, around southeastern Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, the surrounding counties. And of course, since we're SPSO live stream to our friends around the country and internationally, we thank you for being with us right now. And of course, we have very special communities that are dear to us right here in our home. Brittany Point, Lutheran community at Telford, the community at Rock Hill, Lydie's Church community, Souderton Mennonite Homes, and the Peter Becker community. We're so thankful that you can be with us and we're grateful for all your support for us through the years. Tonight's concert we'll get to in just a moment and uh, the pieces that Maestro Scott has chosen I think really speak to our time right now. And we're beginning with The Quiet City of Aaron Copeland. It was written in 1939, Incidental Music for a Play. It was about two brothers growing up and wondering what their place in the world was going to be. Imagine, if you will, walking through an empty city. It's not too hard to imagine now, is it? And the streets are quiet, and all the memories are going through your head, reminiscences about childhood, nervousness about the future, nostalgia, and yet also hope. They're all in this music by Aaron Copeland. It's scored very interestingly for solo English horn, solo trumpet, and strings. Quiet City by Aaron Copeland. We'll follow that with a work that was just written a few years before that, Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings. It's actually from his string quartet. It's the middle movement of a string quartet. He orchestrated it for uh, from string quartet to string orchestra in 1938, just a year before The Quiet City of Aaron Copland, and he orchestrated for Arturo Toscanini and the NBC Symphony Orchestra. It had an immediate and huge impact on audiences. Down to this day, it is still the most performed classical music work of the 20th century. So two works written within just a couple of years of each other, The Quiet City of Aaron Copland and The Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber. And unbelievably, Barber wrote this when he was 26 years old. Well, it's time to go to the stage right now because the musicians are getting ready and Alan R. Scott is ready to come out. So we are about to hear the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra and by Aaron Copland, Quiet City, followed by Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber. Alan R. Scott is your conductor.
And I'm Kyle Smith. I'm here with Alan R. Scott, the music director of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra. Alan, what a great lineup of works that you've put together for this, our first concert of the 49th season. You're calling the concert Music for a Quiet City, and you've chosen these works for a very special reason for the time we're in right now. What do you want to tell people by the choice of these works? Well, I think when I was programming, one, you're, we were limited to not having all 70 players. With Commonwealth Pennsylvania guidelines, about 25 players at most. So I had a, that made a challenge for sure. When I started thinking about being from Philadelphia, even though I'm living in Helena, Montana most of my time, but I'm in Philadelphia once a month, I started thinking about well, how do I capture what's been going on? The city, a city like Philadelphia being completely quiet feels different. Even at three in the morning during normal times, there's a feel. And then I kept saying that word, how do I deal with this quiet city? And of course, I thought of Copeland's Quiet City, which a lot of people don't know, but I've done the piece. I haven't done the piece in a while, but I've done the piece many times. And that he particularly captures a city that feels, I don't know, three in the morning, bars are closed, traffic's gone, the streets are a little wet. It feels strikingly odd, almost like a church would if you're the only one there in a big cathedral and you hear the creaks and, and that's what he's trying to get. It's very reflective. So that's where that came from. I thought this is an important time to reflect. And as I got deeper into this, I started thinking maybe I shouldn't program just a concert from times like I did in Helena, Montana a few weeks ago. Beethoven 7 and, and Tchaikovsky Rococo variations for cello. Great, great concert. But I started thinking, how do I cap not avoid what's been going on? Not avoid how our lives have been affected? How do I deal directly with it? So I said, the quiet city is so reflective. Then I started thinking about Samuel Barber, who was from Philadelphia, from Westchester, Pennsylvania, who was the first student to go to Curtis Institute of Music. And of course, his adagio for strings is so, you hear the, the first two bars, and you, or the first two notes, and you instantly know what it is, whether it's from the movie Platoon, or um, you just know the work. He originally wrote it for a string quartet and then expanded it into a larger string orchestra. We, s we identify with it as a, a a memorial, a remembrance, and how our lives have been affected. Whether it's by someone who's been sick or someone who passed away because of this, or our, just our lives, whether businesses, so many things have been affected and we need to deal with that. And music is such an important way to do that. And we can have, whether it's grief or prayer or whatever it is, this piece helps us sort of go into that from reflection into sort of a remembrance. Then I thought, well, after then dealing with Copeland and this American spirit, why not deal with perhaps one of the greatest Americana works? And I don't necessarily mean patriotic, American flag Americana. I mean a naive America. You go a little farther west, young man, and you'll strike it rich. That kind of feeling, almost this stereotype that we would think today, whereby Copeland wrote this during the war, and he captured an America before the wars, an America that sort of was a land of opportunity and promise. It seems naive and almost cliche today, but I still think it's real. If we talk to people who are not from this country, they still have that image of us. This is not political. This is not about patriotism or anything like that. It's about what the symbol or the promise of all that we can be. Um, and I think he, Copeland does that by peppering in that very famous tune, The Gift to Be Simple. And um, when we hear that, I think it just sounds Americana. I've done this piece all over the world, and an American orchestra plays it as if they grew up with it. So this sort of from reflection, remembrance, and then hope. It's almost as if that patriotism, it's a deeper kind of patriotism, and therefore even more real. And I wonder, in choosing three works by all by American composers, that you're making even more of a statement for our time right now. Is it, were you thinking, I, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but were you thinking this is a way to bring the country together a little bit? Three works by all American composers and it, it's really making a statement to that, that the, the deepest kind of patriotism, which Barber and Copeland had a lot to do with creating, the sound of. Uh, absolutely. Um, 
they were writing at a time, I mean, Copeland lived basically throughout the 20th century, 1900 to, to 1990. Barber died in 1981. Um, and some conductors get very, is ha speak out politically. Um, I choose not to do that, even though people know me, probably know where I stand. But I, I choose to use music to, to make our points. And I don't mean politics in that sense. I mean in the sense that I believe it like it's religion. I believe music was created to save lives. I've been saying that before the coronavirus. I said that when I had you as our composer in residence in Helena, Montana, that we exi music exists to literally transform who we are, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, and especially when there are hard times, especially. The Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra was created for this very reason we're in today. Right after 9-11, everything stopped. Airlines, sports of all things in the United States, the economy, Wall Street stopped. One thing didn't stop, music. People were, I was supposed to be con conducting in Colorado that weekend, and um, we still had concerts. Uh, and that's what taught me that when we are stripped of all we are, sort of very an Arthur Miller play or something like the Trucible or the Death of a Salesman, when we're stripped of all we are, music is the, the gut instincts of what we need, the arts in general, but especially music. It captures what we can't say. And so I think very much so that we're here to heal, um, help each other uh, connect. And by definition, music is about community. If you just compose and no one plays it, it doesn't come to life. If we play it and there's no one listening, it doesn't really come to life. W it's not that we need the applause, but we need the response. We need them to receive the gift. I often say, if you want music, if you're here to be entertained and you think that's what music is, then go to the circus. Not that music can't be entertaining. Of course it can, but it's far more profound than that. What we do, I look at music making as paramedics. What we do is we save people's lives. And I've been preaching that for decades. And, um, and that's the other reason why this is not, um, this is very intentional. I want it American composers, but I also want it an American composer to be here with us, you. I'm very much trying to tie this in here, that I have American composers that were performing, you as a, as a living American composer, well known in the Philadelphia area especially. This is all part of what I'm trying to say here, that we exist for this very reason. I am sure we will start seeing massive compositions come out of this crisis. I'm sure people like you are already affected and it's going to be, it's going to be transformed in, in how you express yourself. It's already happening, and uh, speaking about this time, such a remarkable time, talk about mechanics. The musicians on stage, the instrumentalists, they're under a lot of pressure putting on this concert. I mean, we're talking wearing masks, we're talking about social distancing, there are only so many people that you are, you've worked with the health officials and the local authorities here, how many people you can put on stage, how are you gonna space them out, you've got plexiglass shields, how are they, holding up under all this? I mean, it's difficult. I think the adjustment is difficult, of course. Um, the biggest, the hardest part is that the social distancing, I think, because normally, for example, like violins, there would be two violins sharing one music stand with violas and cellos as well. They all have to be on their own. So the mechanics of turning pages and things like that, they can all deal with that, but it's how we hear the music collectively. And this hall, which we love here at Doc Mennonite Academy, we normally could fit a good 50, 60, with social distancing, we could fit about 20, 25. That's it. So that's a different feel. And to hear the sounds so differently. Again, fortunately, we're in a decent hall. But not to feel it in a tight sort of huddle. Um, it'd be, it's sort of like sitting at a dinner table for two, but instead of sitting at a nice dinner table, at an intimate dinner table, you're at one of those long stretch tables, and you and your partner having dinner are at the eight feet at the other end. It's, you can still have dinner, and you can still communicate, but it's a different experience. So um, my 19th year here, the 49th year of the, the orchestra, um, I think building on that relationship, I think we all, I think musicians want to make music. It's been stressful, but it's more stressful not to play because it's like cutting off our arms if we can't make music. That's why we live, that's why we exist. How could we possibly function? So we'll do whatever it takes, but it was very important for us to keep our audience safe, which is why there's no audience in the hall. But on the other hand, we're bringing it to them in a new innovative way, in a way that more people can join from around the world even. 
and who knows? Well, looking forward then, we have on the second half, it will be the Copeland Appalachian Spring, as we were talking about. Looking forward even past that, November 7th is the next concert. Music, we have music for a quiet city. That's going to be music for dreams and passion, passion and dreams, and uh, violinist uh, Robin Bollinger will be uh, here, so that's going to be a very special concert too, right? Yeah, I, I thought with this concert, every piece ends softly, which is... <laughs> Which is, which is odd, you know, there's no big triumphant ending um, on this concert. But I felt that, you know, as part, yes, it's just like, uh, at least for my family, going to an Italian funeral, you have the remembrance, we have the tears, we have the grief, we have the reflection, but then we have a party. <laughs> and I think a lot of cultures do that. So I felt that we needed to have some release. We needed to have some indulgence. So the second concert, the first half is music by Claude Debussy, who's Basically, he hated the title, but he was an impressionist painter, or impressionist musical composer. He painted like Renoir and Monet, sort of watery. There, he said, paint your dreams or compose your dreams. So the first half is an escape, just to sort of um, escape from, from, from reality a little bit. The second half is to indulge, and we're going to have uh, one of the greatest violinists that I know today, uh, Robin Bollinger, um, from the Philadelphia area. And so she'll be doing a tango, the Four Seasons of Buenos Aires, based on the Vivaldi Four Seasons, but it, this thing is on fire. It is sensual, sultry, and fun. So that's November 7th. Well, we're looking forward to that. It's always a pleasure not only to talk to you, but to be with you, living out uh, your passion and your dreams in this concert, The Quiet City. It's great talking with you, Alan. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Doc Mennonite Academy. It's our honor to welcome the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra into our space, although it is in a bit of a different way. This has been a most unusual year. At Doc, we've been delighted to be able to welcome many of our students back on our campuses. We gave families the opportunity to either have students here in person or to choose a remote learning option. Most of our students are back on campus and it's a joy to watch our students and teachers together to see the excitement as they connect socially again and as they are inspired toward learning. It's been a great joy to watch that happen here and for most of that to be able to happen on campus. The arts continue to play a key role in our school. In fact, in this year, in a pandemic year, the arts have been critically important for our socio-emotional health and well-being. Our teachers have been very creative in discovering new ways of encouraging students to play instruments, to sing, and to enjoy music. And for that reason, we're delighted to welcome and to partner with the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra for the second year, and this year being a bit different than in other years. Music is so important for our community, and even though we're not able to welcome the audience into our auditorium, we hope that you enjoy this music and that this music provides peace and calm to you during these days. We look forward to more normal days ahead when our students and teachers are going to be able to interact more openly and enjoy music in a different way and that the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra will be able to be back here in this space with you, the audience. But in the meantime, I hope that you enjoy the Southeastern Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra and their music. Thank you and welcome.